And welcome back to rival Lesotho political parties. The Oba Soto Convention and Democratic Congress held their star rallies ahead of the 7th October national elections. While ABC scored the highest number of votes, internal squabbles led to multiple splits that will likely compromise its status as one of the biggest parties. On the other hand, DC has managed to hold the center despite losing some key members to the newly formed parties. Our correspondent, uh, Rapelang Khadebe, attended both rallies. The Red Sea at its best. The Democratic Congress is leaving nothing to chance as the political parties hold their final rallies ahead of the national elections. Both parties have roped in support from their former leaders as a show of solidarity. But for ABC, the picture would be incomplete without the unwavering support from the men in blankets. The leader of this FAMU music group known as Tereni, popularly known as Lehlanya, appeared on the South African police's wanted list. He is wanted in connection to the recent Soweto Tavern killings, but he is distancing himself from it. All these allegations can be traced to some political party leaders right here in Lesotho with an intention to taint our party, but their plan never materialized. We have never been on the run from anyone, and we are saying to you, Ndatekavi, after these elections, this matter should still be pursued. <laughs> We are by no means involved in this matter. I reside in Clarkstop, I don't live in Soweto, and my fellow men here. Now tell me, someone of my age in the 50s can never be associated with such filthy stuff. We cannot be linked to such. We are way above that. We are of sound mind and impeccable. If history is anything to go by, this weekend's rallies are a clear indication of yet another coalition government. As the election week countdown begins, it is now up to Basutu to determine as to who the leader of that coalition government should be. Rapelang Khadebe, SABC News, Maserolo Sutu. It's a, a look a little closer at those rallies and of course the days ahead our correspondent Rapelang Khadeba joins us once again. So Rapelang, uh, we've just mentioned that the two of the bigger parties are launching uh, their star rallies and of course uh, not so long ago you were priv privy to this uh, our interviewing of the Revolution Prosperity Party that's also trying to uh, I'd say punch above its weight because it acknowledges that it's had some difficulty wooing voters uh, tell us what the atmosphere has been like in the build-up to this moment absolutely Kevin this is a piece of, yeah this is the closing week where all the political parties will throw above their punches they will bring all their arsenal into this star final rallies ahead of the elections next week to make sure that they woo everyone who may still be undecided for some reason or other to join and give them that particular mandate but as you know maseru as a buzz everybody on the regalia everybody showing what they can likely do when they become government uh, to ensure that every vote, every vote really counts in this matter. We have seen the crowds, we have seen the traffic come to a jam, a standstill, uh, and the three biggest parties really coming out to, to play to woo their voters. Mm. Uh, Raplang, 50 political parties are vying uh, for seats in this election. Uh, surely that splits the cake very thin. Indeed. Um, you can clearly see that there will be 
quite a few disappointments of others who will probably not make it back into the 11th parliament. Uh, we have seen a whole lot of young people uh, taking into the politics, some starting their own parties, the women also not staying behind. Uh, very energetic, very emphatic. But the truth is really, uh, the 11th party will probably, the 11th parliament will probably be something of its own making where we will see uh, a conflict of ideas um, thrown, uh, a new energy. I, I think it's going to be a, a spectacular to behold mm. this 11th parliament. Uh, let's look a little closer at the spectacle. The RFP, for instance, saying that it is willing to go into coalitions. It was very really clear that, for instance, it would not go into coalition with the ABC and some of the bigger parties that it accuses of uh, corruption. So is this likely to actually be a coalition of partners in government? As we mentioned, that um, there are so many political parties uh, that are contesting these elections. You mentioned in that excerpt, in that report, uh, that some of them losing key partners already. Key members, Indeed, rather. Indeed, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you're absolutely right, because uh, the formation of the RFP has clearly eaten into the pie. If you look at the rallies this weekend, the ABC, uh, really former shadow of itself, if you compare to the previous rally, you can clearly see one of the members are complaining that they were sabotaged because they could not get the buses to ferry their supporters. But clearly you could see the gaps. DC has been relatively steady, the Congress party, but you could also see that it is no longer that very tight sea of red as before. So you can clearly tell because when you look at uh, the numbers at the RFP, you could clearly see that there has been a shift. So these three political parties, and we cannot discount the likes of BAP, which is a splinter of ABC, the likes of MEC, which is a splinter of the LCD. So the LCD itself as the former coalition partner to the previous coalition, uh, they are still ranking big numbers on the sidelines. So I'm saying this smaller political parties in their strength, them coming together, they might actually determine the scales of balance as to who might ultimately become the new prime minister of Lesotho and what kind of coalition will it be and how long it will last. Because remember, now that Lesotho was unable to actually uh, pass the 11th Amendment, which included the electoral bill, it means the parties, it will still be free for all. The floor crossing will still happen randomly until those uh, reforms are actually put into place. So it says it's going to be a serious juggle for power as to who will ultimately hold the coalition together and whether the six months will be not a determining factor as to whether it stays or it loses its power. I was actually going to go to the issue of floor crossing of which you and I have spoken about, particularly when it comes to the reforms that it's been discouraged. And uh, as we've just seen recently in Kenya, uh, where political parties now then feel that it's time to join the victor after you know all is said and done. What is the likelihood here? Are the manifestos that the various parties have launched enough to keep people uh, staying with them, casting their vote for them and staying with them? Yeah, what's it, so unfortunately, we cannot discount the fact that a lot of people still go and see politics, see government as the source of income, as the source of employment. So sometimes you may want to be joining a particular party, but if you look at the odds of who, of who will become the employer, who will become the controller of power, people are likely to switch allegiances and Without those uh, political rules, uh, the floor crossing is still an open. People can just decide to club and gang against one particular power simply for the interest of their own personal interest. 
to some extent not even minding the constituencies that they represent. Once they get into parliament, anyone can actually form uh, coalitions or cross the floor with whoever seems like they may give them an opportunity for that much needed in employment. Mm. The ABC's affiliation to the traditional music faction, how is this relationship affecting their brand as a party? It, it has been a bone of contention. Uh, it has been a cause for discussion in many quarters. Uh, some of the founding members of the ABC really see that relationship as a worrisome one because uh, giving them space whereby they actually get to address the rallies. Um, the question is whether when there are things that are going wrong, can the leadership be able to reprimand them or to call them to order? Because the recent leader, Kadi, has actually declared that looking at the numbers that they bring, more than 50,000 strong of support that they bring, and he said, how do you ignore such numbers? Why don't you find a way to work with them? After all, these are the Sotu who are willing to join politics, uh, perhaps to give a mandate to whoever they feel comfortable with that they can represent their needs. But it has definitely been one of those very questionable uh, relationships that many are still trying to find whether is this a good a relationship for the brand of the party itself and where is it going because you find them on both sides dc also has their own faction but it is not as vocal as you see it in the abc so the question is whether to ignore you know, such huge numbers that are likely to be brought by affiliation with them so rapelang we'll get to dc in just a moment but i want to continue with abc its leader uh Gabi speaking about the specter of zamazama's uh, illegal mining in south africa we know that um there are a lot of basutu who are in this country and some of them involved in that and also accused of being involved in crime heinous crimes in in this case as well unemployment also at a high level how do all of these issues intersect particularly for a party like the abc and how are basutu reacting to it how are they interacting with the issue well one cannot really ignore the fact that it has really tainted i think the relationship between the two governments basutu themselves being associate associated and uh, really not in their kind of mannerism to be involved in such heinous crimes. And th this has definitely caused a question as to whether uh, this behavior cannot be associated with Basotho as a whole or a certain group. But Kadi, I think, having spoken in various forums, he's simply uh, reducing it to lack of economic activity or opportunities that Lesotho is unable to supply to them. A long-lasting relationship where Basotho have been very dominant in the mining sector. A lot of those who have now been left unemployed and have taken an alternative measure because of their understanding and their experience in the mining sector, now seeing that it looks like there is an open market for illegal mining, uh, and Basotu, some of those Basotu have taken advantage uh, into that. But really, I think the two governments really need to sit down and sort this out uh, because it is going to the extent whereby it will probably change the relationship between the two countries. That's all. Right. Whole. And uh, Rapalang, the Democratic Congress, you spoke about them earlier on. Uh, their leadership transition is one that you uh, say has been a smooth one. Why is that? What do you attribute that to? Absolutely. I think. Uh, the Democratic Congress from its origins has been a relatively steady. Yes, they split from, you know, the former deputy leader, Munyane Muleli, forming his alliance of the Democrats, but relatively the center has been holding. 
the DC, we have seen the transition from the former Prime Minister, Bagadi Tamasi City, handing over to Matibidi Mukotu, uh, who some were rather doubtful, but I think it was about time that a younger leader takes over, and he has been embraced by his predecessor, Pagadita, who was at the rally and continues to show a strong support to him. I think that is what has made the center to hold. They have been a much more steady party, and we can see, we would like to see whether they have lost some of the members to the RFP, powerful guy, uh, Sahamani, who, who has been very influential in the leadership position. And the question is, uh, can that make much of a difference? Uh, looking at the three other parties or many other parties, I think one would say Democratic Congress has been a relatively much more sober and steady uh, party in all of them. But will any of them be able to translate that into votes that will lead them to the 50 plus one uh, across the mark? Will they be able to get a popular mandate? That's a million-dollar question. I think everybody is praying for a miracle to get a 50 plus one, at least to get the mandate to rule alone. One is trying to, to, to question as to whether how the Matekani, a new, let me call him a new kid on the block, can handle if he does not make that 50 plus one mark. What about the steadier, strong parties like Congress Party, uh, can they really afford not to be in the leadership? They have maintained a very weak coalition, one would say, with the ABC, and everybody is praying for a possibility of that 50 plus one mark. But looking at history, one would say almost impossible. And does that demographic weight, Rapelang, lie with the youth, looking at the numbers in terms of um, who, over the next couple of days, these political parties will have to really work hard at getting into the box? If a brilliant one, I think, that you threw. The youth will probably be the decider as to who holds the power, who holds the weight into likely being in a position to form government. I was looking at how the RFP was presenting itself to the younger market. I mean, they went about town with an air show calling some of the South African musicians, uh, the younger, trying to make sure that the youth feel very comfortable. And the question is whether have they done enough in a very short space space of time to make sure that those uh, young people have actually registered with IEC and can they actually find a way to push them that on the election day they don't find excuses uh, because it's a public holiday and end up not voting. That remains another one to be seen. But if you look at ABC also, it has been selling its manifesto mostly to pushing the young people into its party and they are the ones we have seen a big uptake of young people registering for this year's election i think the numbers were in around hundred thousand election mm -hmm. that is significant considering the population of your city Rapelang, let's leave it there. No doubt your work is cut out for you, Rapelang Khatewa, my colleague uh, who uh, is watching those elections in this sort of course. The election observers have uh, already arrived, particularly long-term observers, short-term observers uh, um, should have arrived by now as uh, on the 7th of October they go to the polls, the Mountain Kingdom of Lesotho, uh, more than 50 parties contesting those elections.